Hello and welcome to lesson two of the UK's Changing Landscapes. This session we're going to be looking at uplands and lowlands. Okay, so last session we eased you in nice and gently um, by talking about different rock types and where they might be found in the United Kingdom. Today you're going to be identifying the upland and lowland areas of the UK. That's a nice easy bit. Um, but then the more complicated bit, and we're chucking you in at the deep end now, we're going to look at how past geology and tectonic processes have helped create the landscape such as you can see on the two images on this title slide. So write down today's title at Learning Objectives and when you're ready you can unpause the screen. Okay so I've got two maps on the screen here. The one on the left shows the relief of the UK. Okay a relief map shows you know areas of highland, lowland etc. The map on the right shows the UK geology. Now we've saw that we've seen that from last lesson. You've got a copy of that in your notes. Um, now there is a bit of a, a pattern emerging at the top, where you've got your granite and your metamorphic rocks. You've also got your most resistant geology, and alongside that, you've also got your highest upland areas. Now the lowland areas are coincidentally where you also find your weakest or least resistant geologies. Your sort of younger sedimentary rocks um, and that's no coincidence because um, essentially you're going to get low areas low land flat land okay near the sea nearer to sea level where you've got rocks that can easily be eroded by um, you know the elements essentially so as that land erodes down weathers away um, it'll create lowland Whereas if you've got a really hard rock, which takes a while to erode and a while to weather, um, it's going to stay high. And that's why it creates these mountain ranges that we find in the Northwest Highlands, the Grampians, the Southern Uplands, the Pennines, uh, and the uh, the Cambrian Mountains, Brecon Beacons, you know, and Dartmoor and Exmoor even, okay? Because Dartmoor and Exmoor, if you've ever been to them, are upland areas um, because they're basically sitting, sitting on granite, which is a very, very resistant rock. So you are going to be looking at the, firstly, this is the relationship between upland areas and geology and lowland areas and geology. Um, and we're going to investigate this in a little bit more depth. Now, one other thing I just want to point out to you is you can see this little red line, which appears here, but also appears on here. That's called the T's X line. And the T's X line is kind of our rough dividing point between the UK's upland areas and the UK's lowland areas. So anything kind of to the south and east of the Tees X line is what we'd call lowland Britain, and anything kind of to the north and west of it is upland Britain. Okay, so just if they use the Tees X line in an exam, you know what that means. Now, the very first task you've got to do today is a uh, copy and complete task. It's very straightforward. I've even given you the first letter, and to the right of the copy and complete it are the bullet points you need to be um, putting into the um, different gaps. So this doesn't require any explanation other than um, that. So please pause the screen. When you're ready, unpause the screen and I will go through all the answers, um, which hopefully are pretty straightforward. OK, so I'm going to go through the answers. The UK is made up of higher upland areas and lower lowland ones. Upland areas in the UK are made of resistant igneous, metamorphic and some sedimentary rocks. I probably could have put older sedimentary rocks there. Lowland areas are made mainly found in areas of less resistant sedimentary rocks. If you match a colourful UK geology map with a UK relief map, you should see how rocks affect places. Tectonic processes in the past have also played their part. Three things in UK natural history, continental drift, convection currents and uplift. Now more on those sections, that final paragraph is quite important and, and we're going to look at that in more depth now. Okay, so um, the other thing I mentioned last session is that even though you've got a UK geology map, all that tells you is the surface geology of the UK. It doesn't give you the whole story and this kind of tells you what we're talking about. Now if you were to look at this from above, OK, this is a cross section. If you were to look at this from above, all it would appear as is one colour of geology there and then another colour here and another colour here. OK, now, as you're doing it a cross section, what you can actually see is that the colours you see are just different layers that have been revealed over time because of various things. And this is an area called Wharfdale and you'd find this in the Pennines. So the Pennines is an upland area. It's got resistant geology, but it's also got 
areas that have been eroded away quite significantly actually um, and this dotted line tells you what the area how high the area would have been prior to the last ice age now I've got some questions that relate to this particular um, cross section um, and you can also see there's even more sort of complex what we call superficial geology just in this very specific area here this valley um, where you've got boulder clay you've got alluvium there's a river here that's what this little triangle is okay um, you've got glacial deposits and there's a place called Buckton which is a little settlement just within that area now if you were um, just using a bit of common sense what I'd like you to do is try and figure out um, the answers to these three questions which of those rocks do you think is the most resistant why do you think that and which do you think oh sorry what do you think carved this u-shaped trough through the middle and, and managed to just bulldoze its way through everything okay now do that pause the screen have a little go you can you don't have to write this down in your book is absolutely fine this is just something in class I would ask you to just contribute via hands up in lessons and um, so I'm, I'm gonna carry on in a minute but you pause the screen try and come up with an answer for all three and then I'm gonna go through it okay I'm hoping that you identified the most resistant rock as the millstone grit um, and the millstone grit is the most resistant probably is the most resistant because it's the highest generally speaking high land suggests that that stuff hasn't eroded and if it hasn't eroded it's resistant so the fact that this millstone grit is right at the top tells me that it's probably more resistant underneath the millstone grit is also these sands and shales now sands and shales are not resistant no matter how you kind of dress it up they are easily eroded so the fact that they are still quite high tells you that the, probably the millstone grit protected them quite a lot um, for a quite a number of years um, and actually the minute that's gone they start to really erode quite quickly um, so there you go there's some reasons as to why because it forms the highest peaks it's not worn down and it's protected the sands beneath and then the thing that created that deep U valley and U shaped trough sorry um, is a glacier the only thing that could go through anything basically including this millstone grit really easily is a glacier now there's no glacier now because we're in uh, an interglacial where it's too warm for glaciers in the UK um, but there is a river that's been left behind a misfit river tiny little river within a wide valley that's what we call a misfit river um, but that river certainly isn't strong enough to go through millstone grit certainly you know over a long period of time and so it's not really affecting that but it is maybe able to go through limestone uh, and that's for a slightly different reason limestone erodes by chemical erosion quite easily um, although it can be quite resistant so there we go that's just using this cross section of geology just to show you that it's not just as simple as the color coded map you've seen there is a little bit more involved but common sense will get you through okay so um, this image hopefully is something you'd imagine being um, on a lovely holiday in the tropical seas of you know or maybe I don't know the north uh, East Australian coast where you've got the amazing Great Barrier Reef um, and you'd be right this is from the Great Barrier Reef you can see a lovely turtle swimming around and all these beautiful corals um, but actually believe it or not roll back a few million years that would have been what you'd have seen if you were standing where the UK is now not where the UK is now because that sort of coral reef doesn't form in areas that we live in in our latitude um, but it did at one stage and I'm going to kind of explain explain to you how and why we know that limestone you've just seen that cross section okay go, and go back a couple of slides this cross section this massive chunk of limestone exists in the UK in the middle of the country you know in in Derbyshire in the Pennines um, Staffordshire sort of north of that so clearly we've had limestone in the UK formed somewhere but limestone forms from coral reefs so coral reefs okay which were 250 to 350 million years ago what covered the surface of the United Kingdom pretty much um, have broken down over time and built up and compacted and um, and created this limestone which we see today but that just tells you that the UK wasn't always where the UK is now um, and that's where the first copy and complete paragraph you've been filling in comes into play because that last paragraph you mentioned continental drift and continental drift is why the UK was once basically on the equator and has now moved much further north 
over millions of years. Um, but in that time, it managed to form limestone. Now, another thing that, that proves that we were once in a tropical area is because the UK's got coal deposits. And coal deposits are just the fossilised remains of vast tropical forests. Now, vast tropical forests don't grow unless you're in a tropical area. Um, and the UK is not in a tropical area. So because we've got coal, it tells us that we were once in a tropical area and we had tropical forests that have since died, fossilised and formed coal. So that's really important to know that, that, that geology really is the study of the history of geography, the history of rocks and, and why um, the UK is essentially structured like it is. Um, so the UK's position obviously has changed and since then obviously volcanoes erupted and, and then spilt out over the top of the limestone and then even more things happened which meant that that's worn down and it forms this really complex layer of different geologies around the UK. Um, so tectonics is this important thing and there you go, I'm going to make the word really big um, just, of, just how important it is. Now I believe that video is saved onto 365 and all that does is just show you if you just um, look at it and open it up it's got some weird reggae music going on. Um, but what, look at the UK and it goes backwards in time as to where the UK has moved from. And at some points the UK disappears under the sea, which is, makes sense because it forms coral reefs therefore, and then limestone eventually. Um, and, and that really just shows you kind of just as an interesting point really where the UK was and how much the UK has moved over the millions of years that it's, it's existed. Okay, so once you've watched that, crack on with the rest of the PowerPoint please. So I mentioned these three things in that um, first copy and complete Co continental drift, convection currents and uplift. OK, but there's also a little bit of extra detail in here, too. So look out for those red terms because there's something which we've referred to a little bit. But I need you to write down all the notes from this page about the three tectonic processes that have shaped our landscape. OK, all three of them, please. So the task is copy and complete this slide so you know about continental drift and what it is and how it affected the UK and our geology our landscape you know about convection currents and, and what they are uh, and this thing called uplift and then also you know about how faults and earthquakes have also affected some of our landscapes now that faults and earthquakes one is going to come into play but I'm going to let you write the notes down first so pause the screen and when you've finished unpause the screen and I will carry on so now you've got the notes about these three tectonic processes, I really want to talk to you about this idea of, of, of faults and earthquakes. Now, faults and earthquakes create these things called fault scarps, which you won't have seen much unless you've kind of really into your geology, but they do put this in exam questions, and I have seen it appear. So look at a past paper, I think either 2018 or 2019, there was a question that actually has a diagram of a, an escarpment or a fault scarp. So you need to know what they are. Um, and I'm going to show you a picture. Here's one. This is in the UK. And a fault scarp is where you might find sort of flat land on one side and then quite steeply uplifted. It almost looks like a cliff, doesn't it? It almost looks like this is a cliff and this was where the sea used to be. But this is where land on this side has been uplifted through tectonic processes millions of years ago and this land didn't get uplifted there was less uplift and so this land has really just been jolted upwards uh, and created what we call a, a, a fault scarp so this is a scarp and this is a veil scarp and veil are two landscapes that are totally unfamiliar to us in Norfolk um, but they are something which you need to be aware of okay so there you go that's just to show you that those tectonic processes and there's not going to be many questions on this in an exam but there certainly could be, and it could be worth one, even two marks. And you don't want to lose those two marks if you can, if you can at all avoid it. Okay. So um, when we talk about physical factors, and we talk about how physical factors affect UK landscapes, we mean those processes, that those tectonic processes, or the landscape processes like erosion and 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 um, how rivers and glaciers have affected the UK's landscape. And if you go to the most impressive UK landscapes and the lovely views you get in things like the Lake District and the Peak District, we need to know and we want to know how they were created and, and physical factors were the thing that made mountains what they are and made the valleys what they are. And we need to know about these physical processes. So um, on 365 for lesson two is this summary sheet. Most of it is completed for you. 
but the rest of it, where you can see these gaps here, okay, we're about talking about freestyle weathering, rock falls, landslides, other you can fill the gaps in using the information that I've already filtered for you on the next slide. Now there's another cross-sectional diagram here in the top right um, and there's other pictures as well to kind of give you an idea. This is a misfit river, wide valley with a little river, piddly river flowing through it um, and it'll give you information. So you need to read through all of this and you need to add detail. Now just so you're aware the left hand side is all upland landscape physical processes and on the right hand side is all about lowland landscape physical processes and it gives you an example the Lake District for upland and the Weald for lowland okay so you need to complete this using the information on the next slide so um, get find this information first find this get it saved onto your work you can type in or print it out and write it that's fine uh, and then use this slide to add the detail now don't write everything down I have put in bold important information but you should now find hopefully where this information needs to slot in you need to know these physical factors we you know again not in loads of depth that's why i've summarized it and done most of it for you but you certainly do need to know them okay so pause the screen that essentially is the final task for today um, and when you've completed all that information then use this read through it all complete the sheet and make sure that sheet is in your notes okay um so when you know pause the screen now make sure you've completed that and then when you're ready you can unpause the screen and i'll finish off okay so i mean we could see this on a map and i'm not expecting you to write any of this down but just to show you you've got a few features here um that again if you've got a map in front of you and they love an os map in, in geography um what you might be seeing so these things called crags and they're called crags because they look craggy like a wrinkly face um they are something which you'd see and they're evidence that there's been weathering from things like freeze thaw so things you've just been writing about that's what it looks like on a map freeze thaw weathering um glacial erosion leaves behind things like tarns again that information you've seen on the the summary sheet previously and then you can again see here a really wide flat valley very few contour lines and this little wiggly piddly river in, inside so a misfit river very clearly is there so u shape wide and flat trough with a misfit river flowing through it um, and you could even talk about all these extra little streams that go through it which tell you about the fact that it's a wet area okay now this is just to show you and again you might want to spend a bit more time than I'm going to give you just looking at this map analyzing it and making sure you can you, you can recognize the evidence of OS maps uh, and um, on OS maps sorry of previous physical processes on UK landscapes okay Right, and, and again, you've got two little things here that compare a misfit river, which you can see I've drawn on, um, with a traditional river valley, which is this U shape and this V shape. So again, not just on maps, this gives you the maps evidence that you might have to use in an exam. Not likely, but you may well have to. But you could also be asked to look at photos. And again, the clues are there. This is very distinctly V shaped and this is very distinctly U shaped. Okay, so taking this information spend a bit more time pausing the screen having a look and seeing that you understand what's there misfit versus traditional river valleys um, and that hopefully will give you enough information to summarize um, these physical processes and how they've affected the UK's landscape right that is the end of session two it's a long one you've written a lot of notes and you've had to absorb a lot of information I would very strongly urge you to follow this up with maybe going on to Seneca and looking at that section you don't need to know it in loads of depth there is only six marks available for this first little section and already I've given you loads of information you need to know some of it you won't need to know all of it um, but I'm hoping you found some of it interesting and hopefully you've got a better understanding about some of the UK's landscape features and how they were formed. All right. I will see you next time for lesson three. Thank you very much for listening and uh, cheerio.